Good afternoon. It's Vanessa Baker here, coming on live for another crafting session with you. Um, great to have you here if you're joining me live, and if you're watching the replay, then welcome along too. Uh, today I'm going to make a faux centre step card, um, and I've got some tips and things to show you along the way, using a new suite, which is, uh, well, it's actually an online exclusive um, Sweet, so you won't find this one in um, the catalogues. So just you can view it online at the uh, Stampin' Up store, stampinup.nz. So I'll turn my camera around. Okay, so the faux center step card. There's a number of ways you can make a center step card, and this is one that I found to be the easiest. So generally and i've got one i cut earlier here the the original version is to have a quite a long card base where you have to make partial scores and then some cutting so it's quite detailed instructions and lots of measurements and you have to be very careful just to score um, certain sections so that one folds up like so and you have something here as a stopper so that's the, the design for the, the original version. But this new, uh, well, not new, <laughs> I didn't design it, I didn't make it up, but um, this other version is a lot easier. You, so this was cut from one piece of uh, A4 card, and I just have these little pieces left over. So one piece of A4 makes um, one card with these scraps, and this... Um, you can use to cut some of the greenery from so that's not wasted or you can use this this would be great for the sentiment as well so perfect use of the scraps so the actual card base has four score three score lines now you probably can't see them um, on this color but I've got two at one end and then one sort of off from the center and really the only rule with this is that your these the two at this end have to be the same size and the two at this end have to be the same size so you can have this as long or as short or as wide as you want just so long as you keep to those um keep to the the even spacing okay so we're going to fold the first one is a mountain the next one is a valley so that gives us our front and then this last one here is also a mountain and so that already has given you that shape that we saw on the other card but it's just with straight score lines so much easier and then the center part again you can make this any width you want and any height now I've kept my height within so that when it's attached to the card, my card is still 10.5 centimetres in height so that I know it fits in my standard envelope. And that's our New Zealand um, size. So this little piece here is going to sit, and this is the faux centre part, so that's going to sit over the top like that and give the illusion of those cuts and complicated scoring. So that's quite simply the faux step center card so we'll just put that background piece to the side we're going to decorate oh actually i could just quickly put the dsp on so i've used the seasons of green and gold dsp and i might just show you because it's really gorgeous got the pack open here on my table and it's all out of order but you'll get what I want to show you so we've got these gorgeous um, greens on the back and I've used this one on the card today and then on the reverse you've got these images now these some of these cut out with the dies that come in the set and they're just stunning see that gold just glistening away there so there's that page and this page that that these cut out with the dies there's this beautiful star gold pattern which I, I was going to use that one but I just found 
when I was looking for which one to use, that that one was a little bit busy for the, I've got quite a busy design today. So I went with, oh, and I love this checked one. And look at this, all gold, isn't that stunning, with vanilla. And on the back, lovely. So the one I ended up going with is actually I've used the same paper, but um, I've used both sides. So this is just more simple um, checkered sort of pattern with the gold. Anyway, we'll go ahead and put, so the DSP just goes on the parts facing the front, so that little strip will go there, and then this piece on the card base. I love these cards that stand up on their own, like, or display. I know all cards stand up on their own for display, but when they've got a bit of a fold to them, it's just something that extra bit special, and I love doing that for Christmas. Okay, I'm just making an even border of my Oh, sorry, my card base is Mossy Meadow. Just making an even border around that. Okay, now we can set that aside and work on the focal area. So I'll go ahead and put my DSP on. Now it's ever so slightly different one way to the other. All right, looks like I've got it right. So again, you've got an even border. It's not quite square, this piece. Right, and then we'll do some stamping. So when it came to doing my leaves, I wanted to keep it as close as I could to the designer series paper because the colors in there are so gorgeous. So I experimented a little bit. And, oh, here they are here. The, the, these are the ones I was playing with the colours to see just what. Um, and I even tried doing some gold embossing as well just to figure out what I wanted to do. And this is a good way, I mean, you can do this on scrap paper. I was actually using card because um, I wanted to see what it was like cut out as well. Um, but you can see my different um, playing with the different colours and doing some stamping off and doing some full strength just to work out um, the look I wanted. But I've settled on using soft sea foam. Now that's not actually a colour that's listed with the suite, but it does give a very soft um, look, and you'll see when I stamp it that it works really well. So this is the stamp set, and it's got um, what we call two-step stamping for this one. So you have a sort of a solid image, and that's the bulk of your colour, and then you've got this which adds in the detail, and each of these stamps has the two steps, same with the bells. So I've got my stamps all mounted. Right, and what I found it was easier, this is quite a light colour, the soft sea foam, so when I was stamping that first, I was then having trouble lining up my second stamp. So what I did is I started stamping the second one, the darker one first, and then adding the light colour as the second step. So you can do it either way. It doesn't affect the uh, final image. And just got that, as you can see. Right, so this is the darker colour. And you'll see all that beautiful detail. And then this one is the second stamp. And it's got the light colour, which is soft sea foam. So I'm looking through the stamp and lining it up. It's sort of like love hearts. It's really cool, these leaves. Lining that up and stamping down. So that's much easier, like I say, than doing it the opposite way around. So we have um, three like that, and we have, <clears throat> excuse me, one, 
it on in slightly different colours. This time I'm using Mossy Meadow and Old Olive. So that one was, the first one was Soft Sea Foam with Old Olive as the uh, darker detailed one. So this one I'm doing the leaves, which, so this is the first one. The lighter stamp and for the darker one is here and this just goes over the top and this just gives more detail it's a little bit of a guess lining it up but I'm just going directly over what I can see through the glam the clear block and also lining up the stem helps as well so that's the effect you get with the two tones Now, just while I've got that out, I might just stamp the inner because I'm putting one of those on the inner. And I did decide on the inner to actually stamp it off. So I've got some scrap paper here. You'll see I've been experimenting with my colours. So I did this one again, olive. So I'll just stamp that there first and then onto the card. So you see you get a lovely lighter version of the colour and the same with the darker one, the Mossy Meadow, I'll stamp it on there first. That one's quite light this time, it wasn't quite that light in my last one, I must have stamped a bit more off. <laughs> but you still get that really cool two-tone effect. Okay, so I'll put that aside. Now I just wanted to show you what I did for the bells. I embossed the bells on gold foil and there's just a, a little trick to it whereas the, so on, on, I'm just using the detailed part of the bell so you'll see on the stamp set that there are, just like the leaves, there's two stamps so this is the large one, you see you've got your colour and then you've got your added detail. But for this, I'm just using the added detail and I'm using the colour of the foil. So it's important to use your buddy, bossing buddy, because the foil really does attract static. And then the other tip I have is that the foil with the Versamark, it can feel like it's moving. So when I go to stamp this, I just, I don't want to put too much pressure. Oops, there's a dimensional back. <laughs> I don't want to put too much pressure and I don't want it to slide. So I'm being a little bit cautious and I'm leaving enough room at the top because I'm going to, when I cut this out, it has a, a top with a hole in it. So, so I don't know if you can see that, but it did just slightly move. So I'll just stamp my three down the page so yeah just go slowly and don't press too hard or you might find it sliding on the paper and then I'll put the powder on just got that off camera down here on my desk okay and that's pretty good actually it didn't get it does to still tend to get a few stray pieces sticking um, you can see I've got some in that corner but pretty good going really for the embossing buddy and the on the foil so then you heat those and die cut them and they come out looking like this so very shimmery gold on gold really cute little bells just for something extra special on a Christmas card. Okay, and then you would die, so you stamp, you need two of that um, spriggy sort of looking one and three of the Love Heart ones. 
and I've also got from the dies there's also some that cut just sprigs without uh, stamps standalone sort of coordinating dies so these are the ones that cut out the stamped images and then these are the extra ones so you've got two sizes there of a, a spriggy leaf and this lovely one which cuts um, beautiful sort of rounded shaped leaves I'm dying to use that one and this, the one other one I've used today, which is again that Love Heart one. I'd love to know what kind of leaves those are. I have to do some research. Okay, so another product Stamping Up has that I would have loved to have used on this is the, it's a new product called Gold Mercury Vellum. And it's, it's vellum, so it's see-through, but then it's got this gold... It's almost like it's been you know how we have the gold leaf it's almost like it's got gold leaf all over it um it, but there's gaps so you can still sort of see through it it's really beautiful anyway mine's on its way <laughs> and i would have liked to have used it today but since i didn't have it i've gone ahead and used a retired product which i still have and this is the distressed gold dsp so this was a uh, beautiful gold distressed paper that we had for a few years but sadly it's been discontinued but um, I think it gives a similar look to what the the vellum one will have so I might have to do an update and do another card using the vellum once it comes okay so back to our card first thing I did I actually put some leaves in behind Now this one's going to overhang the edge a bit, so I'm not putting glue all the way up. And I'm conscious that this is the height when it, the card's finished that I want it, so I don't want to stick it way up here because that won't fit in my envelope. So I'm keeping it within the, um, the size of what I'm doing. I put one of those there and I put one the heart-shaped ones. So I'm just building up a festive little collection here. And then I put this one on. So I'm going to put the glue on the parts really that will be covered and leave these top ones unglued. I like that look of it being a little bit free at the top, but I obviously don't want it to come off. So I'm putting the adhesive where it will be covered. Okay. <clears throat> and I'm going to have that just at the top. I don't want it to go over too far. But you'll see how I'm getting different layers. And then I'm going to cover that with, I've got this sprig here. So now I can put more adhesive on, so I'm going all the way across. So this one, so we're just filling in the area really of the card. Okay, and then I've got, I might put these sprigs on next. Gosh, that wind is getting up again this afternoon. It's uh, it's back. It's been quite wild here the last few days. Right, we'll put that one there. On and off, you know, you suddenly get that really heavy rain. Okay, and this one sort of, we don't want them opposite, so I'm going to put that one on more of a straight angle and these last two layers I'm going to put on dimensionals but I have some dimensionals <laughs> okay so they're going to go sort of there and there so I place them on and then see just where my dimensionals can go so I've got a little gap under there you see that's going to be hidden 
and there's a little gap in here I can put a dimensional and for this one straight up and down also good you can put um, half ones which is quite handy or the edge pieces never waste the edge pieces okay we might just put that maybe up hmm it might be a bit too high really is just over that um yeah I'll just put one in here it's slightly different heights but I think it'll be fine okay Oh, and I've got to put it where there isn't a leaf. Be quick, you can get them off. <laughs> so what I might do is actually put it on my piece. Okay, so I want that one fairly straight. Like that, and then this one on a bit more of an angle off to the side. But just so I've got some of that gold peeping through from the back. Right. Now we're going to cover these stems by putting our bells on. Just slightly bent from the die cutting. Okay. So I'm going to put one below the other. A little bit of glue on that one. And then stick this bell on top on more of an angle. So you see what I mean when I did the stamping, how it's got this um, section at the top with a little hole, so I didn't stamp too close to the edge of my paper, leaving room for that when I did the die cutting. Okay, so these are also going on dimensionals. So this one I want sort of... Actually, I've overhung the edge of the paper slightly, so about there. Let's put a dimensional right, oh, I might cut that in half. Right in there. And I can use the other half over here. And then if I put one on each at the bottom or middle, should work out well. Okay, I'm going to put this one on first. And then that one sort of overlaps it. collection of bells and that's moving slightly there so I might just try and it's not quite hitting my dimensional so I'm just going to pop a little piece of little dob of glue in there to hold that down okay I probably should actually have stuck this onto here that would have been easier wouldn't it I think that might be what I did last time actually okay the way to attach the front to the base what I did is I lined it up where I want it to be so I want it to be overlapping that front panel by about half and I want it evenly spaced on each side so it is actually I, yeah put this on first it's harder to do afterwards because now I've got leaves overhanging so actually I could do it the opposite way and do it from the back because then it's a bit easier to see. I actually did front first, but I'll do back first. So we've got something stuck and we know it's straight. So I'm just straightening that. Okay. Oh, 
Oops, I might have gone too far there. And it's just, just, just tucking in. So that's the back glued. I'll just hold it for a tick or two. And then flip it over. And now we're just going to put a little bit of glue along the bottom edge here on the green so that it just catches on that front fold. Oops, so I bent my gold by doing it that way. Yeah, you definitely want to put this on first. My trusty glue eraser. I've smeared some glue here. Okay. Oh, in there. Okay. We're nearly there. So I've done my words, I've used Merry Christmas, and this comes from a coordinating set. So today I'm really only showcasing the golden greenery and the paper, the seasons of green and gold, but it all comes from a big bundle, um, which I can't quite recall the name of, the suite. There's a whole suite, and the other stamp set in the suite is Greetings of the Season, and that's the one I've used, where are we, here it is, that's the one I've used for the words. So I've taken Merry and Christmas and I've just mounted them together. Oh, another dimensional backing. Mounted them together. Um, I haven't actually ended up using them in a line because it was slightly too long um, to fit under my, around my bells that was overhanging the edge too far. So I've separated them. Um, but I just love the, getting back to this, I just love the fonts. I think they're gorgeous. And these, also just the capitals. And you'll see for what I'm going to do, My one of my favourite tricks, I think I might have done this last week as well, is just the embossing. Embossed words that you then just cut out around them. and mount them on different angles. Okay, so that's that with the powder on, but I've got one I've already heated. And I'm just gonna trim it. So I'm just gonna eyeball an even gap. Top and bottom. You can do this on your trimmer. I just find this is quite quick and I don't mind if they're not completely perfect. It's all part of it being handmade. Okay, now I might just keep that little piece. Right, these go on dimensionals too. Go crazy and put three on there. Probably don't need three, but I don't like it. If, if that got hit in the middle, it might bend that way forever. And I like it to be, you know, the same height all the way across. Okay, so I've got my Mary. And Christmas. 
so I'm just going to have that. Oh, this has ended up in a different place than my other one. I might just move that dimensional down a bit. And then overlap that further. There we go. Mm -hmm. It's ending up on the same angle as the Mary, so I'm going to move the Mary. Mary that way. There we go, that's better. Perfect. And then the last thing I added was the berries. So this is a pack of cherry cobbler and pearl adhesive backed berries. And so you'll see that there's some that are grouped in, in groups of three and then there's single ones. So I've decided to use, oh I forgot the bow. Anyway, we'll do this first, we'll come back to the bow. So I've just used the single ones and I should use my Take your pick tool, get some putty, and pick up my gem. And I'm trying to draw attention to the words, so I'm going to put one down there. And I always work in a triangle, so one here. And one on the other side and I put them on the green because I felt that they showed up a bit more if I put them on the, the uh, vanilla and gold paper um, I think they'd sort of disappear and I didn't want to use the red on this one I wanted to keep it as gold and green and then I've got a bow which I've made from some gold and silver trim I think they're called and I'm just going to attach that with a glue dot. Okay. Here we go. And that's just going to go on the top of the bells. Oh, lovely. And I'm going to cut, just leave them fairly long, just cut them at an angle. And the last thing is to put the inner that we stamped earlier inside the card. I like, the other thing I like about this design is there's plenty of space to write. Just open that out to put the inner in. Okay, and then if we just, once you've finished making, I like to recrease my scores just to make sure that they're nicely done all the way around after we've been opening it and closing it and then it should just stand up nicely I know you probably can't see that very well in the camera but yeah it just stands up on its own and you've got your space there to write in and it's a really pretty card I like how the square on the front gives you a nice base for like a frame almost for the uh, the greenery yeah so I hope you've enjoyed my little video today and uh, all my videos do get uploaded to my YouTube channel and if you do find, I, some people struggle to find the Facebook Live so you can all, always subscribe to the YouTube channel and then you will receive a notification once the video is up on YouTube which should be tomorrow. So yeah, thanks for joining me. I see I had one lovely listener watcher uh, live with me today so thank you and I'll catch you again next week. See you.